Hello everyone, welcome. Welcome to my studio. Again, it's Thursday, it's 3 p.m. London, 10 a.m. Eastern, and it's Phil here from Digital DJ Tips, the world's leading online DJ school with another free 45 minute DJ Q&A. We're on Facebook, we're on Twitch, we're on YouTube, we are live to help you with anything you are struggling with in your DJing, to talk about what's going on in the DJ world, which is quite a lot at the moment, and basically to chew the fat and to talk DJing for 45 minutes together. Very much looking forward to this one. There's a lot to talk about. So firstly, over on digitaldjtips.com, you might notice that we have launched a new record box course. This is called Record Box 6 Made Easy. It covers everything about using record box, whether you're using a lowly, CDJ, uh, sorry, a lowly DDJ, uh, Flex 4 for instance, all the way up through the Flex 6 and the Flex 10 to proper Pioneer Pro gear in the DJ booth. We talk about export mode, we talk about performance mode, we talk about all the effects, we talk about video mode, we talk about using it for controlling your lighting, we talk about using it for cloud, we talk about the new features like mix point link and track separation. In fact, every single item, every single feature, and every single thing you can do in Box across all 15 manuals, yep, there are 15 manuals for Rekordbox, has been exhaustively documented, videoed, and put into a course by us. So if you're interested in learning more about Rekordbox, and if you're a Rekordbox user, you should be, head over to the Digital DJ Tips website where you'll find a banner at the top to click on, which will tell you all about it. You'll go to a video which uh, we've made to show you what's in this course. And if you go and grab the course now, and it's literally just now, only for the next few days, you can grab it at a 50% saving. Now we never offer our courses at 50% off unless we're launching them and even then we don't always offer them at 50% off. So this is a very rare opportunity to get a world-class course at a price that you will never see again. Uh, it's been a real labour of love making this one. We've, uh, we've had a lot of fun but it's been hard. I've even had Pioneer DJ right here in this very studio looking at our progress and they've indeed sent me two people to join up to the course who they want to take through a record box training program because they know how good it is so look it's got the official seal of approval from the company that makes this software really excited to do it so that's the first piece of news but it, there's a lot of pioneer dj news to this week it, it just is it's just the way it's going uh, so another piece of news from pioneer dj this week uh, as an official piece of news and an unofficial piece of news. So if you head over to the Digital DJ Tips School and click on the blog, which is where you will always find the news, uh, the official news is that they've just added Beatport to the CDJ 3000 players, as in the one I just held up and showed you a second ago. So if you have got a Beatport account, you can log in on the CDJ 3000s and just play from it without a laptop, which is pretty cool. But thanks to one of our community members, Brian, who spotted this and we've, uh, we've reported on it today, you can now also analyze tracks off a USB drive without having put them through Rekordbox for analysis first, which is a first for the Pioneer DJ CDJs. It's been on the Denon SC 5000 and 6000 for a long time, but it's a first for the CDJs. So you can find out about that over, the, over on the website. You can click on the video, watch that. I demo it for you. The good thing about this is, you know, we all know we're meant to analyze our music before we go and turn off and play on CDJ players in the club, but not everyone does. Some people will turn up to the club, get to the CDJs, plug their USB in, and someone else will say, hey, do you want to play my new track? Here it is. Hot producer in that club who hands you their new track on a USB. Well, now you can plug it into the Pioneer CDJs and it will analyze it and you can use the beat looping and the syncing with all your usual tracks and get the nice waveforms and all that. So that's nice. Uh, and it's nice that one of our community members spotted it. We could check it, find out that it's definitely true and put it live so that you can learn about it on the site today. Because I asked Pioneer DJ instantly, no reply as of yet. It wasn't in their PR or anything. So at the moment, uh, it's just us reporting on this. Right, so that's a couple of things going on in the DJ world. Do you need help with anything going on in the DJ world? Have you spotted some news you want to talk about? Come and let us know. Uh, but for the rest of this show, now that we've caught up uh, on everything that's new in the last week, I think we're up to date now, aren't we? For the rest of this show, it's all about you. So I've got you all here uh, in the chat. Uh, and so those of you that don't know how this works, I have a special panel here that looks a bit like this, where I can see uh, with a slight delay, which does take some getting used to, exactly what's going on uh, on the live stream. But more importantly, I can see all your comments coming in here, of which there are loads and loads and loads. So that's what we're gonna do for the rest of the time together. Now we're gonna just 
talk DJing and I'm going to help you, I hope. So firstly, a few regulars. Hello, Kesia. Uh, hello to Mike. Hello to Mixmaster G, who's over in the Netherlands and giving us congratulations for launching the Rekordbox 6 course. Thank you. Hello, DJ Fat Tony and DJ Baldwin, who says, I'm wishing you and your family a good summer. Yes, thank you for reminding me, DJ uh, Baldwin. Uh, we are not here after next week for the whole summer. Whee! Uh, we have got our final live streams of the term because we work on school terms, college terms here, or semesters here at Digital DJ Tips. So next week is our final week uh, of the summer term. Uh, and that means that after next week's live streams, there'll be nothing more until the first week in September. So if you would like to stick around uh, and enjoy the live streams we've got left. Make sure you're here on Tuesday and Thursday next week, 3 p.m. London, 10 a.m. Eastern, because after that, that's our break for the summer. Uh, there'll still be loads of content on Digital DJ Tips, loads of cool stuff going on, loads of new reviews, loads of new tutorials and stuff. It just, we won't be doing the lives, just so you know that. Uh, so thank you for the reminder there. Hello, Big Joe Joyce over there in Ireland and Scott and the Ruckus and uh, Baynard. Um, and hello to Isomatic and Brian and DJ John Roback, Jason uh, and everyone else. It's lovely to see so many of our regulars here. And Michael is saying, have a good holiday as well. So good that, so, that you're all remembering that I'm going on holiday. I do like that. I feel like you care, uh, which is nice. Uh, right, so the Ruckus says, I've already begun the Rekordbox 6 Made Easy course, and I'm treating it like I'm using Rekordbox for the first time. You know, Rekordbox is an extremely powerful piece of software. I have to be honest, it's really, um, it's even surprised me, and I've been using it for 10 years, how much it's come on. Um, and so, look, there's so much in, this is Rekordbox, for those of you who don't use it, there's so much in this platform that wasn't here even a few years ago. Um, and so it really is worth figuring out all the stuff that's in here. We actually, you know, as part of the course, we actually go through every single one of these menus, uh, talking and teaching you through everything that's in it. The tr trouble is, if you don't know your software inside out, what are you gonna do when it goes wrong when you're playing live? What are you gonna do when you see someone else doing something cool with their DJ gear and you haven't got a clue what they're doing because they know their software and you don't? Learning your software is the single best way to improve your DJing without playing a single track. And really, if you are a DJ software user, whether you're using your software to prepare your music in Rekordbox, Rekordbox has a full preparation mode, which is what this export mode is at the top, which is only designed for pre preparing your music. This is where you add your cue points and your loops and you make your playlists and stuff. Uh, and where you export to a USB drive using this area here. If you're only using it for that, you need this course because it'll teach you all the tricks of using the tag editor down the side here to make your music more easy to find in the DJ booth. It'll even teach you how to make changes here which show up when you load your music onto the CDJs, which is really cool. But if you are actually DJing with it in performance mode, which is this mode here, then you also need this stuff. But also nowadays, there is a full cloud mode. And all of this is taught for the first time anywhere in our new course. So yeah, um, I'm glad you're enjoying it already, uh, the ruckus. Um, anyway, hello to Steve, who says you always bring great content, Phil. We do try, Steve. Uh, so right, questions. Mark, this is a question about Engine DJ. I'm glad we're talking about Engine DJ. Engine DJ, of course, being the software that is run on systems like the wonderful Numark. I do think this is a great little unit. The Mixtrack Pro Go battery, screen, speakers, Wi-Fi, so you can get music straight into it. Really nice unit. My daughter loves this because she just plugs it in and she can go. No need to do anything else. Uh, anyway, Engine DJ is the software that runs embedded in there, so you don't need a laptop. Also on your laptop to prepare your music for that in the same way that Rekordbox does, as I just showed you with export and performance mode. Engine DJ, it's on Denon DJ gear, it's on some new Mark gear as well. And Mike, uh, sorry, Mark says, can engine automatically scan my SD card and add tracks into folders, or do I have to drag and drop all tracks? So I guess you're thinking about engine on your laptop, right? You've got a USB or an SD, uh, and it's on your laptop. Because when you plug it into your unit, it will just access what's on there. Uh, you know, you, 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 that's it. Um, so can it automatically do it? No, I think you have to tell it, you have to import it. I don't think there's a way of automatically scanning external media. Uh, but if you let us know a bit more what you're trying to do, Mark, on YouTube, then I can try and help you further there and maybe give you some advice on the best workflow for you. 
This is from Big Joe Joyce in Ireland, who says, Hi Phil, I plan to apply, by the way, that was probably the worst Irish accent uh, ever done, and I won't attempt it again, I promise you, Joe. Uh, he says, I plan to apply to music festivals for next summer. I play many genres, mainly garage, breaks, drum and bass. Any recommendations when filling out the application form? Any other tips in general? Um, you know, I've never heard of an application form to play at a music festival. I mean, I'm not saying they don't exist. For me, your job is to get to know the people running the festival and make sure that you are on their mind when they're booking the act. So obviously they're gonna be booking people for warm up stages, for second tents or second uh, stages and so on. You're not gonna be playing um, the headliner slot at Tomorrowland, right? So uh, it's more about who you know than the way you apply, to be honest. Um, and the idea of filling out an application form uh, I find a little bit strange. They're gonna know who they wanna book already, I would think. When it comes to the genres you play, this is a bigger question, right? Because if you play all kinds of genres, how do they know what they're booking? I think when it's the point of being booked to play at a venue, you really do need to have a style that you're recognized for. So you need to choose. Unless your style is to play garage, breaks, drum and bass and everything in one set, and that's what you always do, and therefore you are an open format DJ, then you need to concentrate. Because it's like, I don't know, it's like um, a, a well-known recording artist. It's like Calvin Harris suddenly making folk and then country and then heavy metal. And you know, it's just, it won't, wouldn't work. Calvin Harris has to sound like Calvin Harris. And when, indeed, when Calvin Harris does do different things, he uses a different pseudonym to do it. I can't remember the name he uses for playing more underground, uh, producing more underground music, but when he's done that, he has done that quite recently. He doesn't use the name Calvin Harris, so as not to confuse people, right? So I think you do need to choose what it is you want to do and make sure you're kind of getting known for that, Big Joe Joyce. But filling out an application form for DJing a music festival, I think you'll find that that's probably not the way that they're, they're getting DJs. Do correct me if I'm wrong, by the way. Always like to learn. Hello to... Baba Ra, who's in the mountains of Norway, um, who says, thank you for being someone that I can nerd with. Oh, it's always good to nerd. Um, right, so Mike says, hi, Phil. I asked you about laptop specs yesterday. Mike is one of our students who was on our student Q&A yesterday. Um, so I asked you about lap laptop specs. Do I need an i5, i7, or i9? Um, so the answer to that question is, the better the processor, the better performance you're gonna get, but be guided by what it says in the minimum and recommended specs on the page of the software that you're going for. A tip is if you're gonna be buying a laptop to use with DJ software, when you go to the DJ software provider's website, on the page where you download the software from, there is always, either right there on that page or prominently, a link to their minimum and recommended specifications. So that's the place to start. Ultimately, the more powerful the processor, the better, especially nowadays, because nowadays with stems or track separation, uh, especially, you're just gonna get smoother, quicker playing with that extra processor power. So the answer to the question there is the better processors will be better for you, Mike. Uh, right, so um, let's grab this one off our YouTube from Chris, who says, hi Phil, if I record a DJ set into an audio file, is there a way to generate the track list uh, or do I have to write it manually? Uh, you can export your track lists from, for instance, Serato, and I think Tracks will actually do it as well, uh, and have that alongside the audio file. We, you know, we need to look into how to do it depending on the software you use. So that is possible. And, uh, but there isn't a way of having software like Shazam auto listen to what you're doing and then give you, unfortunately, wouldn't be great if there was. Hey, someone write the app to do this. Um, Mixmaster G, come on, we want an app that will spit out an XML file or a text file to upload to Mixcloud with all the tracks in order with the timestamps of when they were mixed into each other. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't think that exists, um, but yeah, you'll probably have to do it manually. Or, you know, your history in your DJ software will show you the tracks you played, um, but I think you would have to then do the timestamping. Um, but someone correct me, because I'd love to know what an easier way of doing that. Uh, Barry says, excellent, Phil. This is about the Rekordbox 6 Made Easy course, which, by the way, if you've joined us late, is a uh, new course that we've just added to our uh, to our 
whole big selection of courses, I think it's 28 now, uh, which is teaching record box. Go to the digital, digital DJ Tips website at digitaldjtips.com, click at the top and save $150 on this new course just for a few days. So if you are a record box user, uh, do come and get that 50% saving. It's not going to be there for very long and it's never going to be there again. So this is your one and only chance to get it at that price. Um, so yeah, so thank you very much for your uh, thumbs up there, Barry. Uh, and yeah, we're very pleased to have made that course. Um, so right, so this is from um, You Don't Like My Music, who's talking about, and I guess you're talking about um, getting gigs at festivals and stuff. My strategy is to keep producing and hope one of my tracks breaks through. I spent my time hustling for gigs back in the day. I'm trying something different this time. It all feeds in together, right? It all helps. Hustling for gigs is great. Hustling for gigs when you've got tracks you've made out there is even better. They all feed into each other for sure. Uh, so, would you consider, says DJ LRN over on Twitch. Hello, Twitch family. I know we neglect you. Would you consider DJ Pro AI for Mac uh, as a good alternative to Serato for playing out professionally. Well, yes, it is. I mean, our tutor, Laidback Luke, is currently using DJ Pro AI to DJ out professionally, and he's using it on his phone. So yes, you can, it's good enough. That software is good enough to DJ out on professionally. The thing is, professional DJs tend to use Pioneer DJ gear in the DJ booth. They tend to use CDJs and a mixer. James Hype our tutor, used to use Serato, and now he uses this stuff because he knows he can rock up to any DJ booth, any festival, anywhere in the world, and the chances are very high. Obviously now he can make his specifications of what he wants to play on, on a rider, but nonetheless, this is the gear they'll have. You know, eyebrows will be raised if you're kind of like starting to request DJ Pro AI compatible systems and stuff. Not because it's wrong, just because it's not industry standard. And that actually goes with Serato as well. Serato is an industry standard, especially in the US and especially among the hip hop uh, fraternity. Scratch DJs, turntablists, open format DJs and so on. It certainly has its hold there, just like Tractor has its hold among certain hybrid, often European, uh, DJ producer types playing underground electronic music. But by and large, and I'm no, I'm no, um, what's the word I'm looking for? I'm not here to promote this, I'm just here to reflect back to you how it is. By and large, Pioneer DJ, DJing from a USB drive off CDJs is the way it's done. So, you know, as soon as you deviate from that, you are deviating from the norm. And so if you're going to deviate from the norm, there's nothing wrong with using DJ Pro AI. Uh, it works actually with the CDJs, absolutely fine. Uh, and it works with a lot of other gear as well. And of course, a lot of DJ booths don't mind you taking your own gear. And yes, as a piece of software, it's utterly capable of doing that. It's a great piece of software. Uh, but just be aware that most DJs, most of the time will be using something different to you because it certainly isn't uh, a norm to use DJ Pro AI. The Prodigy's warm-up DJ uses it. There you go. So if you ever see the Prodigy playing live, chances are that the music you listen to before they come on is being played from DJ Pro AI software. Uh, right, so Positive T9916 also on Twitch says, onboard analysis on the 3000s. Are they finally catching up to Denon? It does seem like it. Talking of Denon, Maddie over on YouTube says, I got my Prime 4 Plus today and I'm loving it. I'm glad you got one. A lot of people are trying to get a Prime 4 Plus. AO on YouTube, can you recommend any wireless in-ear monitors? to replace my headphones. No, you shouldn't use wireless IEMs for DJing. They have latency, they have a pause between what happens on your DJ gear and what goes into your headphones. That's why headphones for DJs have a wire. So use wired IEMs. Uh, my favorites are the Shure 425s because for me, they're a decent price to performance ratio. James, hype being James, is slightly more professional than me. He uses the Shure 535s, but any Shure IEM we generally think are pretty good, so uh, they're one to look at, but definitely have one that's wired. Over on Twitch then, uh, Margie says, Hi Phil, I'm wanting to do streaming on multiple platforms. Am I able to do this with just my laptop, camera, controller, an external mixer, or do I need more gear? Now I'm bound to tell you here that we have a course called DJ Live Streaming Made Easy. Go take a look at that on the courses page on Digital DJ Tips. With the stuff you mentioned there, laptop, camera, controller, an extra mixer, you've got plenty to stream on multiple channels. The key for streaming on multiple channels is not to try and stream 
from your laptop to all those channels, right? So don't try and get OBS, which is the software most people use to stream from, because it's free, uh, running on your laptop, and then say, hey, OBS, output to Mixcloud, and then output to Twitch, and then output to YouTube. And you know, don't do that, because it will strain both your computer and your bandwidth. Uh, and so the best way to do it is to use a system where you send one output to the internet, and then they split it for you, which is exactly what we're using here now. Let me show you our software that we're live on. You'll see here, this is what's going out live. This is what's being received by the company we use called Restream, restream.io. And here, down this side, you're gonna get that great thing going on now where it all gets smaller and smaller and smaller over on the left-hand side of the screen. Uh, but here, you can see that I've got the four places where we're currently live, Twitch, our two Facebook group and page, and our uh, YouTube page. Uh, and here, and here, and here, you can see it echoing all the way down to infinity. The computer will probably explode and the internet will break when this gets too small, so I better get away from there immediately. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's how to do it. Output to Restream is by far the biggest company that does this. You have to pay for it, of course, because it's a service that costs them money to deliver, uh, but that's the way that we do it, and that's the way I'd recommend you do it too. But yeah, your equipment is fine there. Do look at the live streaming made easy course if you want help with that. Uh, thank you for that question then, Margie. Um, so this is from Sergino, who says, how do you love the Rain 4 Serato controller? Do you think that's all you need to be a professional? All you need to be a professional, and I'm gonna tell you the absolute truth here, all you need to be a professional is two music sources. The ability to change the speed of those two music sources. Something to mix those music sources, and an output for your headphones and for your speakers. And unless you, uh, or rather what I'm trying to say is, uh, as long as you've got those things, you've got everything you need to be a professional because being a professional DJ is not about your gear. Let me repeat that, it is not about your gear. It is about those four things. Two music sources, a way of mixing those sources together. Headphones output, speakers output, and speed controls. That's five things, but you get what I'm saying. You can do that on everything from your phone to the controller I've got in front of me here, to any controller, to the CDJs I've got in the background here and everything in between. The best DJs know how to rock the crowd from any gear. And the point here is that DJing is not about the equipment you're using, it's about the music you've got, it's about the order you put that music in, it's about your rapport with the crowd in front of you, it's about spending a lifetime gathering the best tunes possible and knowing which one to play next, knowing the perfect tune to play next for the people in front of you right now is the essence of DJing. And notice that what I just said has nothing to do with DJ gear. Now, if you're going to say, right, okay, Phil, so I've got to spend my lifetime really getting involved in music and really understanding how it moves a crowd, I would say to you, yes, you have. But you might say, well, give me more specifics. And so the specifics are all here. By the way, you can have a copy of this for joining Digital DJ Tips. If you're new to us, head to the Digital DJ Tips website here, uh, go to the top of the site, click on the blog, uh, or in fact anywhere, and click on that join button. Put your email address in here, I'll give you a copy of the book, and also you'll start getting our emails to help you become a better DJ. Uh, but in our book, uh, the way we teach DJ, and we've noticed people just copying this, just literally ripping this off recently. Uh, we've been teaching this for 10 years. This is the best-selling book on Amazon on how to DJ. So we invented this stuff. Don't accept imitators. The way we teach DJ is very simple. We teach it in five areas, and we have this diagram that shows it. Gear, music, techniques, playing out and promoting yourself. Gear is the techie stuff, right? Electrics, wiring plugs, knowing how to plug in PA systems so they sound nice and all that stuff. It's not creative, it's techie. And enjoying your software, understanding how to use your software and stuff, including our new course. That's all in gear. Music is assembling your music, preparing your music, and organizing your music. No music, no DJ gig, right? Once you understand your gear and your software and you can use it, and you've got a great music collection, we move on to techniques. This is where most DJ schools begin and end. They want to teach you the cool stuff, the mixing, the showing off. That's brilliant. We teach you that too. But it ain't no good if you haven't got the music and you don't understand the gear, right? You're seeing how this is all fitting together now? Then we move on to playing out or performing as we prefer to call it nowadays because you can perform in DJ live streams as well as playing in front of an audience. Playing out is different to playing in your home because playing out involves the crowd, it involves programming music, it involves knowing how to behave in front of a crowd, how to lead a party. So this is kind of like theatrics, this is the same thing they'll teach singers and musicians and actors. It's about how to be in charge of a crowd of people.
And then the final stage is promoting yourself. Because once you've done this once, once you've played a gig once, you're gonna want more gigs. So promoting yourself, marketing yourself, the business of DJing, this is where all the social media stuff and all that comes in. Once you've got all the five steps, you are becoming a better DJ and improving in any of these steps will kind of feed into the whole thing. So look, notice that the DJ gear is one tiny part of this. So your question, is the Rain 4 all I need to be a professional DJ? Well, as far as the gear goes, it's got all you need and about a million things more. It's a fantastic DJ controller, absolutely brilliant. It's got stems separation, it's got four channels, it's got bulletproof build quality. It's a wonderful DJ controller. But you still need the music, you still need the techniques, you still need to understand playing out and moving a crowd and programming music, and you still need to know how to promote yourself and how to get in front of the right people to get those gigs right. So the flippant answer to you is no, the Rain 4 doesn't give you everything you need to be a DJ. But as far as the gear goes, it's a great piece of gear to learn on and to use. And for a lot of people, it might be the only piece of gear they ever need. But really, you need to master how to do it. And once you've mastered how to do it, you can do it on any controller, any phone, any set of record decks, anything really. And that's why our complete DJ course, which is the big course from Digital DJ Tips, you'll see it advertised all over our website because it is our flagship course. It's the one for anyone who wants to learn to DJ. The complete DJ course, right? The name says it all. Our complete DJ course teaches those five areas and it doesn't use one piece of gear or two or five. It uses every piece of gear that we had in the studio at the time to show you that to drum home that it doesn't matter about the gear. I have DJed, I remember DJing in a hotel bar in Cuba, in Santiago de Cuba, I think it was called, in the south east of Cuba. I was asked to DJ in this five-star hotel bar. A five-star hotel in Cuba in 2001 did not have a fully equipped uh, club in its basement. It had a club in its basement, but this club had cassette decks, it had a broken CD player. So I ended up DJing, I ended up going through all their cassettes, finding the tracks I wanted to play, and I had a iPod, or something similar, whatever I had at the time, um, with my tracks on, and I managed to get it all plugged into the back of their mixer, and I was playing one track on my iPod, or my MP3 player, one track from their cassettes, one track from my MP3, one track from their cassettes. Quickly grabbed the microphone, I don't think we had a microphone, I think I had a pair of headphones plugged into the microphone socket, and I was talking into the headphones. There's a tip for you, by the way, that always works. Uh, and that's how I did it. And the reason I could DJ, and the reason I could play that party was that, and by the way, they weren't expecting me to play, Obviously, if I had been booked to play, I wouldn't be using cassettes and talking through a head, set of headphones. I'd been on a charity cycling um, event uh, and we got to this hotel and the hotel manager mentioned they had a club downstairs and it wasn't set up. There was no gear there, but would, would we like to move down there and carry on the party? And we did. Um, the fact I could do that is because I'm a DJ and I'm not taunt, I'm not, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Put off by, by not having the exact piece of equipment I'm used to using. And no good DJ is, by the way. So yeah. DJing is not about the gear, it's about the five steps of DJing, but ultimately it's about loving music and wanting to share that music with other people. That was officially a rant, but I don't like hearing people say, you can't DJ on that, that's not real DJing, or that's not the way to do it because that's not the way I did it when I learned 25 years ago, even though I've not DJed for 24 and a half years. I hate to hear that stuff. Ultimately, if you're moved by the music and you want to share it, then the way you're doing it is right. And don't let anyone tell you otherwise. The rant continued. I'm going to stop now. Let's take a breath. Let's grab another question. Uh, by the way, uh, Positive T says, I love you Europeans and your holidays and vacations. Here in the USA, we get like two weeks off all year. Lovely. I ran Digital DJ Tips taking like two days off a year for a long time and then I've slowly added to the holidays and now we only work in school term time and I love it. Well, I say we, we still work when the kids are off school but nowhere near as much and I love that. Wouldn't change it for the world. Hello Easy Chats who says, Hi Phil, great as always. Do you find it's easier to beat grid tracks manually using the drum stem only now on Rekordbox? This is a great tip, a great tip. Let me show it to you. Right, so in your DJ software, there we are again with me showing you the book. In your DJ software, right, uh, when you're beat gridding your tunes, so this is Rekordbox but it could be Serato, when you're 
your beat grid and your tunes, right? Normally, you will load a tune onto the deck, you get the grid here, that's where my mouse is now, and you can see that the grid looks pretty good on this tune, uh, but you might have to hit the beat grid controls here and you might have to change this. So what you can do if you are in the mode that lets you have stems, which is performance mode in this case, let's grab a tune in performance mode uh, onto a deck and look at it here. So if I was editing this beat grid here in, in this mode, then I can say I want to take out the vocals and I want to take out the instruments, leaving only the drums in this waveform. And that makes it easier to do the beat gridding and to hear where the beats are. And so in Serato, it actually changes the waveform as well, which is even cool. In fact, it might change it in this. Let's put everything back and see if it does. Yeah, I think it does. I think, uh, I think we're seeing a different waveform there compared to, when, yeah, I think we are. Um, but basically, if you can only hear the drums, it's much easier to put your beat grids down. And since stems, since this has arrived, or part separation as they call it in Rekordbox, this has become a thing. And yes, it is easier, especially if you're beat gridding like rock music where the grids change every bar and you've got to be very careful about the gridding. And rock music's very busy, right? And the drummer might be quite low in the mix. It makes a world of difference. I agree with you, I do find it easier. I think it's pretty cool. And this is from, um, this is from Ben who says, does anyone know where I can access the drum and bass sets from Glastonbury this year? I can't find them anywhere. Have you tried the BBC uh, Sounds app? Uh, I haven't looked, but maybe they're on there. Uh, I'm, I'm busy collating all my Glastonbury stuff from the Glastonbury Festival. If you don't know what the Glastonbury Festival is, by the way, it's the biggest um, festival in the United Kingdom. It's absolutely fantastic. I mean, it's 200,000 people, um, which is nuts. Uh, and it's spread out across, far as the eye can see, countryside, tents, fires, lighters, tents full of food and drink and hundred stages from the very biggest to the very smallest, arts and music. It's a wonderful festival. Uh, but uh, yeah, I'll try the BBC Sounds app, DJ Vibe. Um, so uh, this is from The Ruckus who says, in your new record box course, the lessons automatically repeat. Is this new? Or did I accidentally engage it? I've got absolutely no idea the ruckus, I'll be honest with you there. Um, um, you don't like my music, talking about tracks and waveforms, says you can glean an awful lot from a track just by looking at the waveform, you can. And for those of you that remember the days of vinyl, you can glean an awful lot from a piece of vinyl by looking at the surface of it. And that's exactly how I and other DJs used to see where the brakes are. We used to go like this and we used to look here, so if I change the focus on this camera to get the, the record in focus, you'll see that the quiet bits, see where my light is? You can see here where my finger is, that is where the two tracks on this side of the record change. So that is utter silence where my finger is there, but you can see the loud and the quiet parts of the track by looking at the differences in the grooves here. And so when we were DJing with records back in the day, we used to get right down to the record deck, which by the way is why record decks have that light that shines across the surface. We used to get right down to the vinyl and we'd look like this. So you could see the needle approaching the breakdown and you could usually guess where the breakdown was coming, but you could get thrown by whether it was an, a, a full album with like five tracks on one side or just a, a loud 12 inch like this one is. And the speed as well, if it was going around at 33 or 45, then the needle would be further or nearer to the breakdown uh, than normal. And it could sometimes throw you. But that's how we used to do it. Waveforms are a far easier way of doing it than that. I agree with you completely. Uh, right, this is from Ignatius who says, uh, hello Phil, and by the way, hello everyone else who's over on Facebook. He says, hello Phil, I've got questions about Tidal and Rekordbox. Is there a reason why my updated playlists on Tidal don't sync with Tidal inside Rekordbox? Can I sign in and out of Tidal inside Rekordbox? If so, how? Yes, you can. You go to the right hand, the left hand side into the tree and you right click Tidal and you can sign out from there. That might fix it. I mean, it should work. So I don't know why that's not working. It normally does, but that should fix it anyway. This is from Sony Man on YouTube. Hi Phil, I've got a question for you regarding Serato DJ Pro. Do you know a better way to get the beat grids in line with the song? I can edit it and it'll be on time at the beginning, but it will veer off later on. Yes, 
you know, Serato's got great beat gridding. It will allow you to beat grid any song perfectly, or nearly any song perfectly, but you do need to know how it works. So the best advice I've got for you is to go and grab our Serato Made Easy course, which will show you not only how to get the beat grids right, but everything else about Serato. We're talking about the record box course here now, but we've got exactly the same thing for Serato. Again, I'm the tutor in that course, and I think it's about 60 videos. So go take a look, head to Digital DJ Tips, DJ Courses, scroll down to Software Courses, which you'll find somewhere down here, or you can just click Serato, uh, and then it'll fill to them and you'll see the Serato course somewhere near the, uh, near the uh, top of the list there or a bit further down the list as it happens but here it is. Um, this is the, the bible for Serato. This will help you with every aspect of mastering your software. You really do need to know your software inside out and if you're struggling to beat grid tracks I'm going to guess that you don't know your software inside out. So do yourself a favour, take a look at this course. Beat gridding in Serato is pretty much the same as beat gridding in any software but it's better than in some software, for instance, much better than Tractor. So do, do learn your software uh, and, uh, and learn the controls. Ultimately, you don't know the controls because if you did, you wouldn't be asking the question. There are ways of putting lines down all the way through the track to pull the grid, stretch the grid. They call it elastic beat gridding because it's literally like an elastic band. You're putting points in all the way along your track and you're stretching it or shrinking it a bit. And Serato will do all that in the background when you play the track so you can beat mix it with any other track, even if it's disco or funk or even rock and it's been played by a real drummer and the BPM is moving around. Serato will fix that for you, but you've got to know how to do it. It's all in the course. Right, let's grab another live question. We are here for about another 10 minutes, so I'll try and get as many of them in as I can. Uh, this one is from, uh, well, everyone's talking about CPUs, everyone's talking about computer power and saying things like you can never have too much power when it comes to CPUs and I agree completely with you there as well. Uh, Chris, hello Chris, not seen you for a while my friend. Uh, hello Phil and team from Chris and Liam, who is Chris's son, uh, who's DJing this weekend on the main stage with D-Ream, Liberty X and Example. Uh, so he's really excited and again thank you for your advice enabling him to get to this level. He was 14 last week. This is a brilliant digital DJ tips success story. Chris has been teaching his son Liam to DJ. How long for now Chris? Four years? using our courses, asking for our help along the way, and Liam is now DJing at 14 main stage with named artists. It's just so good to know. Well done, Chris, and well done, Liam. Uh, fantastic to hear. Uh, this, is from, uh, this is from Squidward, who says, I've got plenty of tracks downloaded from DJ City and plenty of tracks downloaded from other source. The other tracks are very high quality, but the tracks from DJ City uh, also appear to be much louder. Any solutions? Yup. This control here, let me just get the camera back in focus and while I'm here, I'll zoom in. Uh, this control here, it's called Trim. It's at the top of every single mixer channel on any DJ gear that you DJ with. This is your friend because when you start DJing, the levels here will go up uh, on the channel you're not currently playing when you start playing that track adjust the trim so it's nice and loud and more to the point, same as the track on the other deck, and then mix it in. Tracks are louder, tracks are quieter. Not every music source is exactly the same. Again, back in the days when we used to play with records, we would get albums that had 12 tracks on each side. They were horrible to DJ with, they sounded bad, they were very quiet. We'd play them, we'd get the track loaded onto our deck, we'd get the trim nice and loud, we'd probably end up boosting the treble uh, and the, the lows just to get some bass back into it, and we'd probably also end up with our hand on the record deck to stop the bloody thing feeding back because the grooves were so tiny. And then we'd play a 12 inch from, I don't know, a label like Strictly Rhythm in New York. They were known for their loud pressings. It'd be like three times the volume. So you'd set the trim for that one back down to where it should be at 10 or 11 o'clock. Uh, and then the EQ would be different as well. Use these things, that's what they're there for. They're not put there for fun, they cost money to put there. But having said that, also turn on auto gain in your DJ software, which will make a good guess at this, and then you'll only be tweaking it if you don't agree with what the DJ software has chosen for your track. Uh, that, all of that said, there is a piece of software out there if you're using MP3s, this is only if you're using MP3s. Uh, there's a piece of software there called MP3 gain. Now MP3 gain is very clever. Every MP3 file has got at the very beginning little bits of information about the music that follows. And one of those bits of information is a volume level. It literally is like a digital volume control. It says play this a little bit louder or a little bit quieter. And it tells your MP3 decoding software that this track is to be played at a certain volume. 
MP3 gain goes in there and changes that volume control to make the MP3 as loud as possible without distorting. It's devilishly clever because you don't have to re-record that MP3, you don't have to output it again, it doesn't affect the quality of it. So you might want to, if all your music is MP3s from DJ City and from elsewhere, you might want to look at using MP3 gain to get those all the same volume. You know, some DJs, DJs like to do that stuff, so do take a look at that. Uh, but just use the gain controls on your controller would be my uh, advice there, that's what they're there for. Uh, right, let's go grab one or two more then and then I do have to get out of here people. This is from Daryl on YouTube. Daryl says, thank you and the crew for all that you do. Still using my DDJ SB3, and I'm not ashamed, and neither should you be. Uh, this, this show inspired my confidence. It's not about the equipment, but about how you use it. Uh, big up, Phil. Well, I'm glad that we inspired you. That's what we're here to do. Uh, so let's just scroll. What I've done now is just kind of like gone randomly through the questions that are left because we can't answer them all, so I just want to try and give everyone a chance. Um, this is from, it's just a heads up from Big Fish Little Boat. I love your name, Big Fish Little Boat, on YouTube. He says, hello, old school vinyl drum and bass DJ here from decades ago. I recently picked up a Flex 4, that's this one here, folks, uh, and I'm having loads of fun. Uh, so I'm enjoying being in the mix again. That's great. Um, so uh, Keith, no, this isn't Keith, actually. This is from uh, Fred, who says, uh, I want to know if you want to buy... I, want, I wanted to know if you currently wanted to buy all standalone unit, oh, if I wanted to buy a standalone unit, which one I would use, which standalone unit I would use. Would I buy a Denon Prime 4 or a Pioneer? So to cut very, very short, if I was a mobile DJ uh, and I didn't care what gear anyone else used and I was always going to be DJing on the gear of my choice, I'd probably buy a Prime 4 Plus because it's a very, very powerful unit. It's got everything I could possibly want on it. If I was someone who knew I was also going to be playing in clubs and therefore using this kind of gear, Pioneer DJ gear, I would definitely buy a, say, a, an XDJ RX3, far less power than you get in the Prime 4 Plus, but exactly the same system that I'm using here, which would just make my life a lot easier. I would never try and mix the two systems up. So if you're choosing your gear, Den and DJ Engine Prime 4. If you're knowing that you're going to be playing on other people's gear, that gear is very likely to be Pioneer gear, then get a Pioneer standalone because it's going to make your life easier in the long run. Uh, so, uh, Apos Graham on YouTube says, I need to buy a new laptop for DJing and I'm totally lost. Any suggestions that would last without totally breaking the bank up to 1500 euros, get a MacBook uh, Air M2, job done. Uh, right, so um, Viv on YouTube. I unsynced my record box playlists uh, on my flash drive, but I've tried to resync the playlist again, but now it's showing empty on my controller, although the files are still there. How do I recover the playlists? You get our record box course where I show you how to do it. I mean, I'm, I know it sounds a bit flippant, but it's all in there. Uh, the point is, record box has got a way of relocating lost files, and that's what you need to do. You need to relocate the lost files using that. All of the stuff in this record box course everything, apart from two things actually, two big things which aren't in the manual. Apart from that, everything in this record box course that we've just made is in the manual, all of it. So just look at the manual. And I say that because for some people that will work. The trouble is, manuals don't tell you why. They'll tell you what a feature is and how to operate that feature. But most of the time you're left going, well, all right, you know, you've pointed me to a button and I've just done it. Why? Why would I do that? And that's why we make these courses. We explain to you why a DJ would want, it, would want to use that stuff. We load music up. We demonstrate it. We talk to you about when you might want to use it. And who wants to read 15 manuals, right? So the whole point is that our courses are like a Bible, our software courses. Once you've got it, that's what you refer to when you need help. You find the lesson that talks about what you need help with and you watch it. And if you don't get the help from the lesson or you don't understand it, you ask a question underneath and then we help you, right? It's like the fun way to learn your software. So take a look. Um, right, so this is from, um, uh, this is from, 
DJ Stu C, who says, I honestly believe the days of thinking you need pioneer DJ gear in order to get gigs are well and truly over. Good DJs will play on all gear. Well, yes, they will. And, and you know, if you're happy playing on anything and then going and playing on pioneer gear in the, in the club that's provided it for you, that's great. Um, I agree with you. Uh, okay, final question then for today. This one is from, who should we have? Um, this is from... Uh, DJ Busy B, who says, Hi Phil, we all talk about the top few DJ softwares, Recordbox, Serato, and Virtual DJ. I used to use PC DJ, and I converted to Serato years ago. What are your thoughts on PC DJ? Do you remember Talk, T-O-R-K? That was another old piece of DJ software. Other platforms are still going out there. I'm trying to think of some others now. Remember Mix Vibes? Uh, there are others. Look, the point is that DJ software is just there to do a job. It's just there to facilitate your DJing. And the big platforms stay up to speed with all the latest features because they're all trying to outdo each other. And they stay up to speed, more importantly, with all the latest operating systems, computer chips, and hardware. And ultimately, that's why we buy them nowadays. Computer software is 10 a penny. It's how it works with the hardware, how it works with the systems that you want to use, and more importantly than all of that, how it works with your computer. Because if it doesn't work with your computer and it no longer works with the current version of the operating system and stuff, you're stuffed. That's why it's kind of consolidated down to a few big names. Uh, and the biggest two, Serato and Recordbox, pretty much rule the roost nowadays with behind there, Virtual DJ and Tractor, both of which are still very popular, but not as popular as Serato and Recordbox. It's just the way it is, right? That's how markets mature. Things kind of like go down into the big names. And same like if you buy, go and buy a, com uh, a camera, you'll probably buy a Canon camera uh, or maybe a Sony. Uh, and the other names, Olympus and so on, are still there, but they're not quite as big. I guess that's just how all markets kind of work out in the end. Uh, so yeah, there's, there's, there's good software out there, out there that can do the job, but you've got to have a very good reason to not use one of the big names because the big names are reliable and they're going to get out of your way so you can get on with the good stuff, the creative stuff the music stuff, the crowd stuff, the programming stuff, and stop worrying about your software. One thing that I've noticed over the years, one big difference between professionals and amateurs is that professionals don't spend a lot of time worrying about their gear or their software. They figure out how they're gonna use it and they stick with it, and that's the end of it for them. Yes, of course, they love to experiment with features. Yes, of course, they love to add new gear when it appears, but they're not constantly saying, should I be using a different type of software? Should I be, should I be jumping platform to, to another platform? Or should I completely change up the way I do things? Some do, of course. Layback Luke is currently experimenting with using a phone to DJ with, which is awesome, by the way. But the vast, vast, vast majority stick with what they know and spend their efforts making great music and playing great music. And again, as it's been a bit of a theme of this live show, it's not about the gear. Yes, master your gear. Yes, get to grips with your software. And you do that in order to get to the good stuff, not as an end in itself. On that note, I think we're going to leave it for now. Thank you very much for being here today, everyone. Sorry I couldn't get to all your questions. Remember, if you're a student of ours, you get to come on the student live shows every month where we deliberately stay around until we've answered every single question. It's just one of the bonuses of being a Digital DJ Tip student. Uh, and so if you do want to be on those shows and you do want to uh, become a student and you're not already, uh, then our current course, Recordbox Made Easy, is a good place to start, assuming you're a Recordbox user. $150 saving, 50% off if you get this in the next few days. Totally remade from scratch, totally up to date, with me as your tutor. So go take a look at it. It's the big banner at the top on the digitaldjtips.com website at the moment. Meanwhile though, for me, Phil, here in the studio, for another Thursday, and for our penultimate Thursday before our summer break, get good, get out there, make the moments. I'll see you again very soon. Bye for now. <laughs>